blood suckers. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of hell, join us. You will realize that there is something ahead. Groovy. Something that lurks behind the dark veil. We have such sights to show you. A veil that's beyond our own comprehension. I'm just gonna bash your brains. Beyond the void. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond, Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. That's right. It's episode 172, and today we're going to be talking about VFW w. by Joe Bigos. Bigos. That's how you say it. Cool. I didn't know that before. So, oh, I, didn't I, I saw him on the Severin uh, Cellar thing and uh-huh. he said his name very clearly too i might add <laughs> that's cool but yeah we're really excited to talk about this movie i've been waiting for this movie i've been hearing about it since like i think it was months. a fantastic fest like last year or some shit like that but uh it just got released to the wild so if you haven't seen it yet you can watch it on vod it was playing at select theaters this past weekend so right uh, actually not weekend it was well yeah it was it was on friday yeah. and saturday yeah and i think it was even on thursday that's, i don't know that's what they call the weekend Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's working for the weekend. Okay, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> you don't like that song? Get a piece of my head. I don't even recognize <laughs> it off the top of my head. You never heard that song? Oh my god. Anyway, so we we just got copyright striked. Um, just kidding. Anyway, guys, so we're gonna be talking about that. Uh, anything new that we can talk about? Oh, happy Valentine's Day to those who either celebrated it or spit at it in disgust. I hope you had an amazing time, either you know spending it with someone you love or spitting at somebody you hated. We uh we made the mistake. babies. We made the babies. <laughs> she, the look on her face, guy. <laughs> uh, go ahead. No. <laughs> Well, no, because you just ruined it. Okay. You just ruined it. I'm done. No, what? What Wait do we it. do? Goodbye. <laughs> we we made the mistake of going and seeing Fantasy Island. Oh yeah, which I just put up a review of on Saturday. So they we're recording this the same day we put it out, but you'll be hearing this on Monday. If you haven't, please go watch it. Please go like it. Please so subscribe to our YouTube. It's actually a really funny video, so you really should go watch. If it. If you say so, you make me laugh. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's why you're with me, isn't it? Oh, we're all so happy on Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> Gunshot in the background. <laughs> oh, that's dark. Um. Anyway, so, yeah, we did some fun things, though, on Valentine's Day, though. We did our kind of like our, our Valentine's Day the night before. Yeah, we made lobster tail. Yeah, that's right. Lobsters. That was good. That was really good. Yeah, yeah, we had lobster tail, and then we had like sausage, potatoes, and peppers with it which is weird combination but well, it kind of made amazing. sense it made sense I, that's, I always make it like that i just love amazing sausage <laughs> i know you like sausage oh god here we go <laughs> <laughs> you just a- you were asking for it oh uh, yeah well it's, it's like if you don't like sausage or something what <laughs> <laughs> never mind anyway guys so i think it might be that time what time is it horse shots, shots! Okay, guys, so we are back to do our horror shots for this week, obviously in uh, to do for the VFW movie, which uh, is, stands for Veterans of Foreign Wars, Wars, if you've never heard of that. But uh, as one of the punk kids in the movie <laughs> said, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> anyway, uh, so Christina came up with a shot, so she's going to tell us all about it. And it's called The Hype Shot, mm-hmm. and it consists of one part vodka, one part pickle juice, 
And then on the rim, as you can see in the picture. Yeah, if you go to the, the website, longlivethevoid.com, and you look at our episode or our horror shot section, you'll see this. Right. So around the rim, we have a mixture of powdered sugar and purple sprinkles. <laughs> because in the movie, there's this drug, which is called Hype. And it's it looks like a like a purple, bluish purple powder. Yeah, yeah, like a purple powder. And I was trying to do I was quickly trying to do some sort of purple substance. And this is all I could come up with. Let me just last tell minute. you something though: veterans would not have this kind of shit. Well, no, it's but, beautiful, but th- I'm just saying. Right, but <laughs> see, but this is a mixture of the drug and right. the vodka for right. the veterans. Gotcha. And the pickle juice, which is which was just a quick scene in the movie. Right. So you do it. like three fourths of an ounce of vodka and one fourth of uh, pickle juice. Yeah. Yeah. Which oof, I'm not sure what I'm going to think of this pickle oh. bag. Well, here, let me. Oh, <laughs> flashbacks to pickle bag. It's been a while since I had some <laughs> pickle bag. <laughs> So Christina actually made these, so we're going to try it here. She's, we were even debating whether or not we'd stick like a purple, um, what is it? It's a red vine, a grape red vine. Yeah, grape vine, they call them technically. Uh, but yeah, so here's to a VFW Joe Bagos, B, Joe Bagos, Bigo, fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> here's to you, Joe. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. That's a... That's a lot of pickle. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> there's a lot going on there, Christina. Drink it. Slam it. Yes, you can. She's like sipping it. Like, mm-hmm. it, It's because I get sick. Do you I want me to try it? Yeah, you want me to do, you do it? Do We're heroes, god damn it. <laughs> uh, hey, it was, it's kind of a good mixture of the two, though. It's uh, interesting. It's an interesting yeah. ragtag mix. Of... It's a good for the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good for the movie. Yeah. So if you guys would like to try the hype, all you have to do is go to longlivethevoid.com and check out our hashtag horror shot section now. Well, that's it for horror shots. All right, now, guys, we're going to jump into our spoiler-free review first before we jump into any trivia or any kind of spoilers, so don't worry. But we're going to jump into our flesh and potatoes of VFW right Get your fucking ID cards for the VFW out because it's time to fucking dive into our spoiler free review. So, Christina. Woo! Pickle juice got me all hyped. Yeah, it's got you hyped. hyped. Yeah. <laughs> I just got that. Okay. All right, VFW. It was just released. And like Alex said, it's on VOD or. Well, it might be theater. in select theaters still, but I don't think so anymore. But maybe they'll extend it. Who you knows? You never know. Well, VFW. Oh, and uh, the, the Blu ray comes out. And the 4K come out on March 31st. There you go. There you go. So, VFW is about a group of war veterans who must defend their local VFW post. And also, they have to uh, defend this innocent teenager against a deranged drug dealer and his relentless army of punk mutants. Mm-hmm. And remi- I, we're going to get back to that mutant part a little bit later on. This movie was directed... By Joe Bigos. Yeah. Right? Did I say Bigus, right? Bigos. 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 Um, he also did one of Alex's favorite movies, Bliss. Um, he also did the- That yeah, was my number one movie of last year. Yeah. Uh, the Mind's Eye and Almost Human from 2013. Mm-hmm. This movie was written by Max Brillier and Matthew McArdy. Who were bigger names in the industry, I guess, like for uh, some of the movies that they've written, like some of the bigger- Shit, yeah. From what I gathered, they were uh, one of them was just a production assistant on oh, Transformers. On. <clears throat> That's what it was. Okay, I yeah. just I just took a glance at oh, it. Oh no, it's okay. Um, yeah, Matthew Ar- Ardell. Mm-hmm. Um, he was actually a pr- uh, production assistant on Oz Zombies, Transformers, and a movie called oh, Flip. Oz Zombies. Yeah, I know. I nice. know. I, I saw that. that. I love that movie too. That was one of our first movies together that we really. Was it really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was. 
Um, okay, and Max uh, Brawlier, he wrote a movie called The Last Kids on Earth. I've never heard of it, have you? No, I haven't heard of that one. It sounds familiar, but I don't know. All right, so this movie stars Stephen Lang, mm -hmm. who plays Fred, the bartender, um, who is most known for his performance in Don't Breathe, which he's amazing in. in which he was in uh, Avatar. That I always remember him from the, the like, uh, military guy in that, actually. Too, oh, okay. So. He was all, he's also in the Salem series. He's really good in that. And mm -hmm. then he was in the Manhunter series as well. Hey, he's been around for a long time since yeah. the 80s. Long time. Uh, William Sadler, who plays Walter, he was recently in the reboot of The Grudge. Mm. And he was the Grim Ripper in Bill and Ted's. And he's also reprising his role as Grim Reaper in the new Bill and Ted. Yeah, face the music. He <clears throat> was also Jim in The Mist. Um, and he was also in Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. Yes, which was one of my favorites. Yeah, it was yeah. a really good movie. Um, Martin Cove, who plays Lou, uh, he was in. He was also in an episode of Tales from the Crypt mm -hmm. in an episode, and he was in the Karate Kid series. Yes, that's and, how I always remember. Yeah, him. and he's in Komo Kai. This was called right Komo Kai. That's Cobra series. Kai. Cobra yeah. Kai. Yeah. Yeah, he was the 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 sensei for the for the bad kids. Right. You right. Know. And he was also in Rambo First Blood 2. Yeah. Second one. Fred Williamson, also known as the Hammer, and he plays Abe. He what he what I know him most for is from Dust Till Dawn. He's awesome in that. Yeah. And then he's also in a bunch of like 70s black exploitation. Mm hmm The biggest movie of the, all that was called uh Black Caesar. He's also been in another movie that I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> the <Okay>. podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's there. It's, it's actually one. Okay. Uh, David Patrick Kelly, who plays Doug. You mostly know who he's from. Alex pointed it out, too. He was Jerry in Twin Peaks. Right. The original Twin Peaks. And Wild at Heart. Right. And he was also uh, T-Bird in The Crow, and he was in The Warriors as well. Yeah. Early, early stuff. Yeah. There. Really. Early. Well, these are old guys. <laughs> yeah. It's cool uh, to see him, though. Right. Uh, George Went, who plays Thomas, mostly known for Norm from Cheers, and he was also in Bliss. Yeah, and you know he's been everybody. He's one of the poker players. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom Williamson, who plays Sean, he's the young vet. He plays the young vet. Uh, he was in All Cheerleaders Must Die from 2013. Something called The Fosters. It was a TV show, mm -hmm. and um, Five Pierce which was one of his more recent things. Uh, Sierra Mc McCormick, who plays Lizard. Uh, she, she's just been in a lot of TV. And then she was in two episodes of Supernatural, because I know there's a lot of Supernatural fans out there. Right. Well, same thing with Twilight Zone. If you're old enough, you'll be in Twilight oh, right. Zone. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Uh, Dora Madison, who plays gutter uh she was she was the main character in bliss right so you know of course she's in this too also she was in the into the dark hulu movie all that we destroy oh which yeah i did, i was like oh huh. I, I i vaguely remember that one they all kind of run together in my yeah, head for some they reason really do but i thought that was interesting and she was also in dexter like the last season of dexter she was in okay but, did, uh do you know the budget for this movie no i couldn't find it i, I couldn't either yeah Shocking. I'd be curious to know, though, because, you know, they seem like they made it stretch pretty good. You yeah. Know? And I know it was filmed in Dallas. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. And I think, well, there's some trivia that I'll explain when we get to that. Too, okay. So, so what do you think of this movie, Alex? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I got a lot to say about this. VFW is a movie that takes a bunch of the fa my, some of my favorite older actors over the years and characterize them as veterans of foreign war and pits them against hyper aggro like junky punks <laughs> in the setting of a bar uh-huh anything you can imagine in a bar is pretty much fashioned into a weapon which is fucking fantastic i love that and they're all you know hell-bent on dismembering every addict in in the in some of the more violent and blood spattered ways I've seen in a movie, it's essentially like I said, veterans versus junkies, and a sort of homage, in my opinion, to Assault on Precinct Thirteen. Only it's at a local post, you know, twenty four ninety four of the VFW. Uh huh. The movie isn't a tongue in cheek either, like I was expecting it to be, because I thought it was going to be like this over the top funny thing. Right. And in some ways it is because the gore is so over the top, but it actually tries to tackle real issues in a kind of a serious way while still being overly gory. Uh huh. So totally overly gory. Yeah. 
there were a lot of moments that had me cackling pretty hard, like a mad person when it comes to bloodshed. <laughs> like there's, uh, you know, a lot of violence and brutality in this movie. And uh, other times it becomes such a sort of a bloody gore fest that you kind of become desensitized uh-huh. to everything that's happening because they throw everything at you. And I'd say this is probably the most gore filled Joe Bigos films I've seen yet. Uh, they are all have their bouts of gore, but this one is like kind of unchained, you know, like it's it's pretty wild. But was it everything that you were hoping for? Well, I guess it depends on what you like, you know, because uh, this movie is pretty straightforward. It's not all a twisty turn ride of a story, you know, that that surprises you every five seconds. It knows exactly what it is. You know, it's, it's a straightforward basic premise to just enjoy people being popped, smashed into bits or just delimbed for your enjoyment. Okay. So, uh, which isn't a bad thing by the way. So if that's what you're looking for, this one might hit the spot because I love those kind of films and I kind of feel like we've gotten away from them a little bit, but I can't help but wish that it dipped into a little bit more about veterans and like their, you know, like how they feel about certain things and how they react to certain things or maybe triggered. And I don't know what is tasteful or not tasteful because you don't want to be completely disrespectful to that, but you also want to honor those kind of people in a way. So I feel like it could have gone a little bit more in that way, but it's not supposed to be that way. It's really just supposed to be this kind of straightforward thing. But there's right. a piece of me that wishes it would have pushed that a little bit. Right. That's how I feel, too. Not not characterizing them and stereotyping them as some bad thing. Although what, you could be arguing about the fact that they're all drunk. Right. Right. <laughs> Which is also a stereotype, too. But whatever. You know, I still enjoyed it. So I think they all did their roles pretty well. You know, Um I feel it could have had a little bit more depth, though, into that, like, sort of combat shock, mm-hmm. like that feeling of uh, being a hero and coming back uh, when nothing feels exactly right. Right. Um, right. Still, I mean, if you didn't catch what the fuck this was going to be about from the trailer alone, you could be expecting a little too much from the premise. I feel like we don't really get to see these kind of wild, semi-simple concepts just unleash on the screen anymore. Like, it always has to be some deep thing. So I understand, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a balance. You know, you don't want to go too far into one category because it turns the film into something else or tonally fucks up the fucking film. And this is an all-out splatter fest. Right. So... I think he wanted to stay that way. So maybe that's why they didn't go into some of those elements, you know, uh-huh. plus they're taking it out on some pretty shitty junky dealing pieces of shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it makes sense. But I love seeing like punks or like, you know, like subcultures, like in movies like that, because I always remember like, you know, things like return of the living dead or like, you know, like these like punk kids that, you know, roam the streets, you know, <laughs> in the eighties, it was always about that. Like they were out there like lurking. I forget, but there, there was another movie suburbia. I think I forget where they did something like that too. And it's kind of like, it's a really interesting concept to fucking tackle. So I just like that in a film. So it's it's nice to have a film that doesn't take itself too seriously in the premise, but also kind of like take it seriously in the same regard. It kind of rides that line a little bit. So I miss those kind of films. Uh huh. The music in this film I thought was pretty good, too. And that's by Steve Moore. It's always kind of nice to see him. He's no stranger to Joe. You know, he's worked with him before, I think, in Mind's Eye. I even have some of his music in my, you know, uh, dark synth, synth wave, and electronic, and more fucking Spotify playlist that everybody keeps jumping on uh, that I put in there because it's really good stuff. So uh-huh. I think it was a nice touch that they added in the film. Although some of the parts were, you know, obviously tonally trying to be like a militant thing, which I wasn't like super into, but I still think it was a good, I think it was a good move. Mm-hmm. Uh, the acting, like I mentioned before, was pretty decent. A few times I just sort of accepted it, but it wasn't like, that it wasn't like noticeably bad although there was some times that you know you could they stuck out a little bit but i don't think it took away because this movie is so fucking crazy yeah yeah. like i mean some of the main stars for me in this movie is obviously william sadler who you know how can you not be a fan of him in demon knight right i love him in that he's done so many other remaining amazing performances though so not just that um and these are all people that are you know my childhood like growing up with these 
these guys you know what i mean so it was nice that they just weren't some random nobodies yeah you know plus you got uh steven lang who you know he's been in the industry for a long time but you know he when he gets his roles that are just perfect where he plays this like darker kind of guy it's right. kind of cool and he totally fits the bill for this so i think he did a good job him and fred williamson um nice to see him let loose on this kind of film mm-hmm. like you know like it's just cool um but all of them do great and they even have some other ones in there you know that you know like you mentioned norm from cheers and you know they even have um martin cove who played a, a good character that was kind of reminiscent of Jeremy Piven's role in Judgment Night, if you've ever seen that movie. No. He tries to, like, <laughs> make a deal with somebody in, in Judgment Night. Uh-huh. Um, and and then it turns poorly, so it just kind of reminded me similarly of that. Uh, also, I thought Tom Williamson was really good, too. He was the most brutal motherfucker in that fucking movie. Like, he was... I don't I can't say he was the younger vfw oh yeah he was amazing yeah he was pretty cool i i his role in cheerleaders must die was he's played a real icky character oh okay and so it's kind of nice to see him in that hero role this time Uh uh-huh so i was really fucking happy to see that uh but yeah i mean every everybody did a really good job i didn't have any complaints whatsoever and it was kind of like writing that line to kind of be that 80s aesthetic almost i know that it's not it's over said and overstated so many different times but because of the type of movie that this is it feels like it belongs in there it does it totally does it's it's overused i mean i i overuse it too many times but i definitely yeah it, it is an aesthetic that some people really enjoy and appreciate and if you're a fan of the 80s or 70s or even you know you appreciate that kind of thing right so it's not a negative in any respect whatsoever there are a few minor you know just little picky gripes that i could have with this movie but you know, there are so many scenes of blood, action, and mayhem that you're bound to notice a few late swings of an axe, maybe like a few light blows to the face, because maybe I'm paying attention too closely or something, <laughs> because there is a lot of action and gore in this movie, and it's like, to coordinate that and how much it costs to do all of that uh-huh. is not an easy thing to balance, so... But, you know, that's just minor shit that I fucking have, you know, whatever. And there, I've watched and loved many 80s movies that do a lot worse. So I'm fine with that, too. But that's just, like I said, a minor gripe. It's noticeable, but not a deal breaker. But overall, I'd say this is a really good film with plenty of scenes to make you kind of gape your mouth open. You know, seeing some of the cast from my past, you know, join forces or friends and heroes together to fight against these junkies just kind of tickles that part of me and my nostalgia that is pretty cool so i i definitely give it a lot of credit for what it did and it's no bliss you know it's not it's not a bliss movie it's a very different film from bliss it is uh it's not as like intimate you know Uh what i mean but I would probably give this maybe like a seven, seven point five for like that straightforward bloody vets against junkies. You know, like I mentioned before, it knows exactly what it set itself out to do and it did it and it did it well. Uh huh. Um, it may not be like the super in depth that some people are looking for, but I think it delivers on the gory goods of any exploitative films like it's supposed to so if you are a fan of those kind of things then you should watch this movie you shouldn't Uh deprive yourself of it for any reason not that anybody who's interested wouldn't want to see this anyway so but uh i think joe is bringing the goods these days with that keeping that fucking thing alive because it feels like we've taken a backseat and we're doing a lot of these slow burn movies lately yeah so i've i started to feel the wear of that this last year a little bit oh my gosh and so like while i like them i'm like jesus can we get some of that shit back yeah we need some action it is a nice it is a nice change. And that's mm-hmm. that's also why I picked Bliss last time because it's so in your face. And I, I, I wanna see more of that. So mm-hmm. what about you though? So we did that horror shot and now you have powdered sugar on your nose and it looks like you just you just did your whole review like you just sniffed a big thing of cocaine <laughs> or something. I'm getting hyped, man. I'm getting <laughs> fucking hyped. <laughs> That's, That's funny. funny. That's a good Is thing about that there? shot. Yeah, it was on there. You got it. Okay. Yeah, it, there was like this huge white. It's good. <laughs> it's good. So what about you, Christina? I thought this movie. 
Just kidding. <laughs> did that make you want to cough? Yeah, it did. Uh. Uh, oh, I thought this movie was okay. Okay. Um, I again, I enjoyed. She's hard to please, guys. All right. <laughs> Just leave her alone. No, I enjoyed the gore. I did, I didn't have any real expectations from this. I remember seeing the trailer, but it reminded me of what Night of the Living Drug Addicts. I don't know what that. Oh, okay. you know what I mean? Because they had to keep barricading themselves. Sure. Because they were their their bar was being attacked. Sure. But I do agree with you. I really wish they would have. Uh, tapped in more to the whole older veterans yeah type of thing what you know why more of like why they all get together there and you know what i mean the and, way the camaraderie that they had there i think was pretty spot oh, yeah, on it was it was good it was good i think it, yeah i just wanted more of that right or more of a backstory to that you really do like these guys and yeah you, and you definitely are on board with them it's not like riding the line of are these good guys that we should stand up for right. you know although you know there is some weird shit in there that just you know older guys you know they would right. say but but i mean i do like the premise of they just it was just this story of this situation on this day sure they didn't you know there was no flashbacks or anything it was just everything that happened that day right but, you know that that was pretty cool then um it was shot really well and usually i don't like movies that look this dark and then the colors yeah like red you know I mean? purples yeah but it really worked it worked really well here because you could see it was like a dark time in whatever timeline they're in it was it was just like a dark time well i think it was current i mean maybe it wasn't but i, I don't know it felt current yeah i don't know I thought everybody's perform like everybody's acting was good. I thought Stephen Lang's performance was so intense, like he totally got into it. I totally believed him. And when it was ready to kick ass, he was like, you know, sure, this is my fucking bar. There was and one moment that I just didn't believe he would do. Was it? Towards- I don't. We can't say. What I will say is. it was towards the it was, end. Though, it was right but- before the third act. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That yeah, that was so the, the that was that's a writing thing. I'm not saying it was his performance. Right. I think oh, it's just it didn't he, belong. Uncharacteristic of him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like what what is the straw that broke the camel's back? You know? Right. Right. So, and like you said, I liked how there were punk rockers in the movie because again, I, I love, love that. that. But I do hate like why do they have to be the junkies? <laughs> <laughs> really like why do they because have to it's be fucking the vfw dog. why can't there be like mormon junkies or like <laughs> <laughs> well that would have been you know too they... over the top yeah that would have been but yeah i'm just like oh that's too much you know it's bad yeah. enough you know like you don't want to go too far yeah you're right you're right but this movie really reminded me elements of hobo with a shotgun oh yeah i could see that the, well yeah the it's... gore and then like the the older <clears throat> Males taking charge, sure, getting shit done, sh- shooting people up. Plus, the way it was shot, there was a lot of the same yeah. similar di- yeah. director of photography and lighting and shit. Right, and shots. also Turbo Kid. But for every everything you said, like the whole eighties aesthetic, mm-hmm. um, there there was a a scene where they were like getting ready, like getting weapons together and stuff, and that really reminded me of like Turbo Kid. Okay, I don't know why. Gotcha. But, you know, it was okay. I gave it 6 out of 10. Okay. That's not bad. Good. That's that not bad not at that all. Bad. I enjoyed myself. I... It was a good Valentine's Day movie for us. Yeah, it was. But she was tired. We had a really busy day, too. So that's saying something. She could have been a lot harsher. Yeah, I could have been a lot, <laughs> a lot harsher. I just wish... I wish there was more gore. I w- wish there was more gore. <laughs> yes, I wish there was more gore. I mean, I the wish I, I would have seen a little bit good. more variations of gore. That's probably a yes, better way to very, say it. Yeah, okay, thank you. There is variations, but, you know, it is a costly thing. Yeah, I know, And what I know. they were able to pull off, good. I guarantee it, they did really well with the budget they had. Right, yeah, they did do good. Yeah. I don't know, I, maybe it was just spread out too much, but I did like it jump right into it from the beginning. Dude, I was getting, I, I was like, how am I going to write all these down? Like when we go to our favorite yeah, yeah. scenes, I was like, Jesus Christ, how am I going to write these down? So I had to kind of like set myself back and go, OK, which one really got me right. or which ones really stood out? So right. we'll, we'll be talking about that we'll in the spoiler section. Yeah. So for me and you both, I got like a seven, seven point five. So it could be about a six point five or six, seven, five for both of us. Uh-huh. If you add the squares together. Uh-huh. So I think seven is totally, uh, totally appropriate for people who like this kind of thing. Uh, or or higher even you might even like it more right it's not cheap i don't feel like it's cheap right 
Um, and it, and it could have been <laughs> very much so. And I think because he took it kind of seriously in a way, mm-hmm. even though most people who see gore, they go, Oh, that's so ridiculous, which it is, but he played it straight a little bit. You right. know? It wasn't like some jokey thing. They have jokes in it, but they weren't to distract you from the movie. Right. So, but yeah. So, uh, if you haven't seen the movie, and, and I really encourage you guys to go out and rent it and support it, because we need to see more movies like this, I think. Yeah. I feel like horrors, you know, it's doing really well, and we're getting a lot of really good, great masterpieces, but we need some shit like this, you yeah. know what I mean, to balance it out a little bit, because it's going to get real tiresome seeing all that over-the-top fucking, like, slow burns, like uh-huh. Lighthouse and The uh-huh. Witch and shit like that, like, I get it. Like cool masterpieces, if you consider them to be. But let, <laughs> this is also the kind of shit that I grew up on. This kind of feel, this kind of vibe. So let's have more of that. Makes but sense. Uh, yeah, we're gonna jump into our spoilers section, which will have trivia and some of our favorite scenes. We'll get into more details about things that we couldn't. Uh, you know, maybe some things that we didn't like or some things that we loved. So you're going to want to stick around for that. If not, come back after you watch it and we'll still be here. All the timestamps are located below so you can check back with us. So let's go ahead and sound that alarm. Please do not listen to this if you have not seen the movie. That's right. Please do not listen after this if you have not seen the movie. You will indefinitely ruin your experience. Thank you and have a nice apocalypse. Time for the purge. <laughs> so do you, uh, you don't do the trivia, so I'll just kick it off with some no, of the trivia. No, I don't do the trivia. That's your job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do some light ones up front um, so that anybody who's still lingering and doesn't realize we're in the spoiler section. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so the VFW that they actually used in this movie, the interiors of the VFW post actually were shot on location at a real VFW hall in Grand Prairie, Texas, specifically 2494. Oh. Several of the halls, real veterans appear as extras in the in the bar during the opening scene. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's That's super cool. Right. And if you if you guys have seen the movie obviously, then you know about the punks and their like lair, <laughs> which is like or the drug addicts if you want to call them that because I don't consider all punks just complete drug addicts. <laughs> In fact, I knew a lot of straight edge punks like for many years, but uh these ones are definitely addicts. <laughs> right. And drug dealers and shit like that. But they they take a they have a lair in a theater like an old rundown theater which was what was the name of the theater oh crap i forgot uh fucking i didn't realize i forgot to write you it took down it, you took pictures of it didn't you oh no nah, but that's okay but i i noticed on the billboard the marquee it said like a few things on there that i thought was really cool one of them saying cyborgs 2 which is not a real movie but i looked it up and i was like well there's a cyborg 2 but there's no cyborgs oh uh, but they did also have one on there that was Bliss, which is Joe's movie. So right, right. thought that was super cool. And they did have a few extras. And we tried looking them up while we were watching the movie because we were geeking out a little yeah, bit. We couldn't find them. Like there was one that said Deadly Encounter. And like I looked that up and there was like a Deadly Encounter movie or something like that or Deathly Encounter. But I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. So I don't know if that there was any other Easter eggs in there. Or if anybody else could figure it out, let yeah. us know. If Joe's listening or something, maybe he could fill us in because I'd love to know because I like stuff like that. You know, <laughs> I did notice. Did you notice when they were talking about the strip club and they were going to the strip club? Right. What was it? David Patrick Kelly. Is that his name? The guy from the Twin Peaks? Yes. David Patrick Kelly. OK. Yeah. He was uh, he was like looking at it, too, or something. He came over and said something because because one of them is like, we need to go to this. This is the daughter of the girl from 1963 <laughs> whose daughter is going to be dancing right here in town. They're trying to convince Stephen Lang, his character, Fred, to go to it because it's his birthday and he doesn't really celebrate it anymore. And he gets pissed when people talk about it. But you can see it. Fred Williamson, that's who's holding it, is like mm-hmm. looking at it and it's folded over and it says plan nine on it and then it and like i'm thinking plan nine from outer space and then david patrick kelly goes something about outer space or something like that so Uh i think that was kind of a little 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 nod nod. yeah just a little minor one but i caught it Uh uh-huh um unless that was the name of the strip club or something like that i don't know 
That'd be a cool name for a strip club, Plan, Plan 9, 9 yeah. for Outer Space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, I watched, when I mentioned it earlier in the in the podcast here, Joe is a huge fan of Combat Shark. I mean, he's a, a fan, at least. And one of the movies he picked from the Severn Cellar was Combat Shock. And we almost actually used that to pair with this episode oh, that's right we did we were going to do two movies including combat shock and we would do the combat shock afterwards and talk about what we think about it and maybe we still will i don't know we'll have to we'll have to i want to get that movie i also want uh-huh. to get deadbeat by at dawn uh-huh. uh so maybe we'll get combat shock and deadbeat at dawn and do those together or something like that but yeah he's a big fan uh it is on amazon prime by the way and you can find the uncut one and the cut one so look for the uncut one uh, it's a little bit longer, has more gore and stuff, I think, in it. So, But I still want to watch it. I haven't seen it yet, and maybe we'll do that uh-huh. on the podcast or Sometime. I'll do a retro review maybe. I don't know. But I think if you guys check out that Severin Cellar thing, it's pretty cool they're doing it. They had one with Richard Stanley as well for the Color Out of Space. Uh-huh. Very cool stuff. So, you know, um, what is the collections what are they called criterion yeah criterion collection does something similar to that Uh where they have like directors and famous people go in and pick out so severin is doing something very similar to that which is a good idea it is a good idea good marketing right a real small one that i found on imdb was that even though it's never spoken on screen walter's army jacket And the end credits indicate that his surname is Reed. So it's saying, someone's saying that it's a reference to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center of one of the, of the United States most prominent military hospitals. I don't know if that's 100% true, but it makes sense. That's kind of cool if it is true. Yeah, I'm sure there's other Easter eggs and stuff in there. And I was kind of trying to pay attention to see if there was any of their famous lines and other from other movies Mm -hmm. that they said in it. Mm -hmm. And I I think I was just blown away by all the fucking violence on the screen. (laughs) You got distracted. (laughs) Which speaking of which, Hmm. uh, what was the first thing that you saw in the movie that like caught your attention? in the beginning of the movie to let you know kind of the what this movie was about oh the girl jumping off the balcony right me too yeah me too and she was jumping off the balcony trying to get to the drugs right which was, was kind like, of dark like, like, yeah it was really dark because they're in this theater and he's on the top balcony overlooking all the chaos because people are just like wrestling and fucking there's fires in the middle of the fucking theater and like people are running around like crazy on drugs and the cool thing was is that these drugs like had an adverse effect on them physically too Mm -hmm. like the girl who jumps off she has like red spider webs yeah yeah it was like popping out kind of gross no that makes me think because because in all the synopsis and descriptions of the movie i read they kept saying they were mutants and i'm like i didn't get that well they do kind of like have that thing in the very beginning of the movie that kind of describes what the drug is which the drug is hylophedrine yeah which is called hype and all the people who use it are called hypers. Uh-huh. Um, and they kind of talk about how it's like destabilized the whole, like everywhere, like, like the whole t- the world is kind of fucked up. Oh and t- yeah. They're falling just apart. Like so complete addicts. Maybe, and, maybe yeah. there was like a, a loose subplot that didn't really matter. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I was just like, what is it? They're just drug addicts. They're not mutants. I just I thought mean- of it as like a newer advanced drug. Yeah. You know, because they have this new one. So, I mean, yeah, I thought it was cool, though, that right. they had their faces. Oh, totally. But she, yeah, she does like a fucking swan dive and just falls on her stomach. And the funny thing is, is that, I mean, I like the blood. Don't get me wrong. And when she hits the ground, it blood is just everywhere, which is oh, super cool. And she splat like she made the splat, the splat sound, too. Right. But the funny, funny thing is, is that her sister comes in later and picks her up. And there's like no damage to her face or anything, and you can completely see it. Uh-huh. And I was like, I almost felt like they should have like fucked up yeah, her face, flattened it a little. Yeah, bit or, like yeah, you know, put a little like, prosthetic thing on. Yeah, there. like even a fake body or something like yeah. that. But maybe you know, it was a too much. Yeah. So maybe they might have added it. It was still cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm it's not. This shit. is me being picky, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I noticed it. That's the kind of things. The little phrase. 
Um, one of my scenes was when the girl busts into that bar, when she steals the drugs from the fucking bad guys and runs to the VFW being chased by everyone. Mm-hmm. All hell breaks loose. This is like the best part. Yeah, this like, is a good part. This is like he runs like the the bad drug dealer's brother chases after him. He's the bigger guy. He was in Bliss as well, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one with the beard. Yeah, I think so. I don't remember. I don't remember either. I can't remember. He might have been the drug dealer in Bliss, now that I think of it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think he was. Yeah. I want... Oh! Was that Tank? Whoa, does that mean they're connected? No. No, that... Because it was Bliss, and it was black powder versus brown powder. Yeah, no. Or or blue powder, whatever. Nice thought, though. I don't know. Similar, so because there was a lot of actors in Bliss that were in this. But yeah, he chases her into the bar, and immediately Stephen Lang just pops him in the face, and it has a glorious head popping scene. Which yeah, just, that was awesome. That was great. I think we both were like, "Oh God!" I was like, "Yes, here <laughs> it is." You know, like they have little spouts of these like violent bursts. You know, because if they were just to do that from the beginning to the end. It would have been just like insane. Right. Like, but, um, but yeah, he sh- pops that guy in the head and then fucking <laughs> William Sadler's like stomping on a dude's head until it caves in like 50 times. <laughs> you remember that? Like, yeah. is it Walter? Is that his name? Yeah, Walter. Yeah. So I thought that was really funny. Uh, but there's a lot more things, you know, like Stephen Lang uses a, doesn't use an axe on somebody and cuts their arm off. Mm-hmm. And then, like, a bunch of other stuff. So mm-hmm. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, there was a lot going on, too. <laughs> there really was. When they were getting all their weapons ready, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, oh, you saw yeah, them, like, the Le Montage. And then also when they, they started blockading the door with dead bodies. Oh, yeah, <laughs> which is kind of fucking funny because he stuffed one in the side of a pool table, right. which I thought was ridiculous because it's like it's obviously fake. Right. right. There. <laughs> but you just kind of accept it and move on and enjoy the fucking grew. Right. Um, I did have that one scene where they get surrounded outside because they're trying to save the... I always yeah, I keep calling Norm. Her Norm. Yeah, I can't help it, man. You That's so disrespectful. Like, I know, but you you just can't help it. Thomas. His name was Thomas in the movie. Oh, his name is Th- Okay, I got gotcha. you. What's his real name, though? His real name is George Went. George Went. Yeah, Jesus. I know. We should know that. I don't know why I don't know. It's so familiar. Right. <laughs> anyway, but they get surrounded out there because Stephen Lang and fucking William Sadler go out there to fucking help him or something like that. And then they they end up fucking getting five fucking crazy junkies behind them. And fucking Williamson comes out, the young vet, and he's just like, pop, 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 <laughs> like in a row. And they're like, damn, that was some good oh, shooting. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was some good yeah, shooting the, there, Tex. The and he, young veteran. He's like, yeah, they call me dead. Dead eye. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, it's obviously a good, re- good name. <laughs> His fucking role in this was pretty fucked up, man. Because they have that big old fucking bouncer junkie guy who's like running things with the fucking the the dealer oh what tank yeah his name tank the first time he comes in steven lang scares him off with the fucking shotgun fred's character his character fred scares him off with the shotgun but when he comes back he's just laying waste to everybody Uh uh-huh and like fucking the girl whose sister got jumped off and did a swan dive off the fucking balcony she like starts stabbing him in the chest and shit like that because they all kind of doubt that she's helpful uh-huh. he's like oh i know you can help but then she really proves herself by right. stabbing him in the chest he's like oh or, ah. yeah jumping on his back and then stabbing him. right like she does she she saves everybody's lives yeah. you know like he was about to kill uh fred right but when he falls to his knees that fucking young guy fucking starts kneeing him in the face like 15 fucking times <laughs> until his face looks like fucking looks like it exploded like marmalade just dripping <laughs> off of his face and i was like i was that was where that was my cackle moment right uh-huh. there you didn't even laugh I, like you were just sitting i was there. watching it that's why uh, i was like totally i was like yes <laughs> uh <laughs> Like, some of my favorite scenes are with him. I don't know why. Like, all the yeah. death scenes are really cool with yeah. him. Like, he has that other scene where they, like, he's jamming that, like, junkie's head onto some antlers. And you hear it all, like... That was one of my favorite scenes towards the end. Gurgling and yeah. shit. 
And then and then they make like fucking tennis ball fucking grenades. Yeah. Which didn't make any sense. I know they were like matches, like (laughs) shoved in a tennis ball. Like how did this explode? Yeah, I didn't. didn't Maybe they put gasoline on the. Maybe I don't remember, but yeah, they must have. They must put gasoline on the tennis ball because it would suck it up. No, because it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Not like gunpowder. A gunpowder, you would have to stuff gunpowder in those. Oh. For it to like really pop. Because they use that one where it just like they chuck it in the back door when everybody's trying to break in and it just you just see fucking limbs flying up in the (laughs) air, which I was like, man, they should have added more blood there. (laughs) But, you know, that's a tough shot to get. Right. You got to have like 16 people holding limbs and chucking them up in the air. Right. Um Back to that antler mm-hmm. scene. Did you notice they they did that? He said something to prelude to that. He was like, "Don't stab somebody's eye out with the antlers." Didn't he say, "Don't stab everything... yourself out on those antlers"? Oh, I thought he said, "Don't stab somebody's eye out on those antlers." Oh, like maybe that. he did. I didn't catch it exactly. Yeah, yeah but I do remember when, that. Yeah, because then when that antler thing happened, I was like, "Oh." Right. And you know what was a little disappointing, too, is like, but that foreshadow, which was a very quick foreshadow because right. it was like within five minutes, they show the truck outside. I forget what they call the it. the beginning. A yeah. dually or some, what do they call it? A, a dually or dually or I, double? I don't know. Double stack? Double wide? No, Something, <laughs> but it's an old military vehicle outside with a fucking gun on the top. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, they're going to use that mm-hmm. to mow down a bunch of fucking junkies, dude. Mm-hmm. And they never did. <laughs> yeah. Well, they used it to mow down one junkie. Well, that's fair. But and that was a cool scene, too. But yeah, I thought of the first thing I thought of when they first showed it, I was like, oh, Dawn of the Dead. It's like the bus. They're going to have to use it like the bus. <laughs> yeah. Hot wiring it. And shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. But that knee kick to the face is probably my favorite kill in the movie. Where he's knee, knee kicking the fucking guy in the face till it turns to fucking. Oh, yeah. To mush. mush. Yeah. <laughs> that, was like, cool. that was so cool, man. Uh, tank. Yeah. Tanks. Yeah. Character. The big guy. And he was a big guy. There was another scene, though, that I really liked that was a competitor to that gore scene was the one where Stephen Lang fights the chick who's Gutter. Uh huh. The lead actress from Bliss. Dora Madison. Yeah. She uh, gets stabbed from behind. <laughs> yeah. And then fucking tilts her head back and and Fred stabs the fucking VFW flag through her oh, mouth yeah. and out the back of her neck. Uh-huh. That, that was, was cool. really cool. That was really cool. I like that scene a lot. And I'm sure that was pretty technical to get done too. So um plus there's other funny things that aren't just gore in this movie. Like they had the Fred Williamson's character. He does the drugs. I was just gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, wait, what's his name? I was looking for it. That yeah, was funny. That was cool. I'm glad they did that because I guess he probably knew he was gonna die. So it was just like, fuck it. They're all like, what the fuck, dude? (laughs) And even at the end, when they come back inside after everything's over, they're like, they think he's dead. And then he's like, I I ain't dead, motherfucker. (laughs) And then he dies. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it is silly, I guess, in some ways, but it did feel more real than, you know, you know, slapstick. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Is there anything else that you think that what was there anything that you didn't like that bothered you a little bit? I can't. Towards the end, when uh, the guy went out to negotiate, I don't know why that bothered me so much. I'm like, that's the scene that reminded like, me of Jeremy Piven from Judgment Night. And I'll oh, explain okay. after you say your thing. Oh, th- that's pretty much it. It, it just what bothered you about it. I, it well, I, I just don't understand why he thought like, like it was a very ba- obviously that. bad idea. Yeah, it was yeah. obviously bad idea that he was just that confident in himself that when you. Like, I don't know, common sense means you can't reason with people like this. They just killed, like, a shit ton of people. I don't think, you know, you trying to negotiate, oh, I'll just give you the drugs back and everything will be cool, right? Well, he does right? brag about how he's such a great salesman that he can sell anybody on anything yeah, throughout the movie. But- so, but, you know, in the same respect, and, and like when I mentioned the whole Judgment Night movie, if you guys have never seen that, it's a movie with Emilio Estevez, um, fuck, Jeremy Piven, and uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. They also have the comedian Dennis Leary in it, who plays the bad guy. And Jeremy Piven's character is the guy who like swindles this deal to get this like really a lot like expensive like million dollar fucking RV. 
uh-huh. to go see a game. And then they take a side street to get to the game and end up getting seeing a murder and all this other shit. But Jeremy Piven gets into a situation where he is like trying. He like has to climb a ladder and he decides to like reason with these guys because he's like, this is what I'm good at. But because he's too scared to cross a ladder over a building. Because they put this big ladder oh, down uh-huh. and then and then he throws it and he's like, nah, I'm going to make a fucking deal with these guys. And he ends up he's like, look, I got a Rolex here. I can get you a lot more money, guys. Uh-huh. Let's work a deal here. And then he's like, see, it's all worked out. And, and then get- they shoot him and he falls <laughs> over the side. And it's like so it's like very familiar in that regard. Right, right. Like it's almost like very similar to that i don't know that joe was necessarily trying to do that or they were writing it that way right but now that i'm thinking about it didn't they say something about him going crazy before he went because when he was walking up to do the negotiation he was like it's like he was hyping himself up but i was like is he hyping himself up it's just crazy uh walter did say oh he's losing it man he's like he's almost section eight you know like yeah uh, which is basically getting discharged for being crazy or right, something like that. Right. Um, but what do you think? I didn't really feel that. Like it didn't feel like it was building up. Oh, okay. So you know what I mean? Like I don't. I'm not saying that it wasn't. Right. I'm saying it that the movie didn't portray that very well. Yeah. If it was. Yeah. So yeah, I got kind of lost there. Yeah, I don't know. Only other thing that I there, you could see some of the deaths and everything coming yeah. a mile away. Oh, yeah. You know, you got fucking uh, David Patrick Kelly. Who's on the bar? He gets the axe to the uh, to the to the shoulder blade, and his like arms hanging off, and he's like smoking a joint. You know, you know he's gonna die. Right. You know, I I did. I was glad that they were picking off characters I liked. Right. Because um, you don't expect it. Well, you kind of do, well, but you don't. Like, yeah, you but don't, you don't want them to die. Like I'm glad that I cared enough about the characters and their and the way that they performed. Uh, un- that I liked these characters and I right. didn't and I was rooting for them. So that's a that's a huge win. Right. That's more than half the battle right there, because if they don't care about those characters, their deaths. Yeah. Are then it's, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I say like Martin Cove's character, the salesman guy. I didn't really it's not that I didn't like his performance. I like him as a person, you know, like as an actor and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it felt a little rushed. Right. there. So I guess I could say that. Yeah. That makes sense. The punk rockers being the junkies. I thought that was, I mean. I I don't know. They were picking them off so fast. I was like, in my mind, I was like, I wonder how many friends he asked to come hang out like, (laughs) Uh and do this scene, you know? (laughs) Because you would just see like some of these girls, you know, like we would see in like the goth or industrial or metal scene. And like. Oh, yeah. Spiked bras. Like. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, Just like, you know, people we would know or something, you know. Right. (laughs) And they're like picking them off and you just see their head go back. Right. Cut away real quick so that it looks like it's like actually impacting at that moment and stuff. Uh huh. Other than that, yeah, I I had a really good time watching this. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. I thought it was fun. And I wish we could see more movies like this. So while it does borrow from some things, I guess, I don't think it was intentional. Oh, no, I don't think. It's it's just so, it's it's a very simple premise. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I just, you know, it just reminded me oh. and made me want to watch these other movies as well. That's one of the things I wanted to point out that we didn't get to talk about when we were in the spoiler free section is when Stephen Lang's character decides to suddenly quit and just like give up and drink. And then, oh, yeah. And then Lizard goes into the back room like, what the fuck? She's like, you can't do this. Those guys in there, the people who died, they they trusted you. They believed in you. And it's like she's more of a soldier than he is at that right. point, which was a little hard for me to swallow. Yeah. You know, that he just gave up. Yeah. That easy. He was just like, oh, but go. maybe that was the straw that broke the camel's back is someone, some, some of his buddies who he really cared about. Right. Died. He like crumbled under the pressure. But Stephen Lang's character just doesn't seem like the type. To let that thing, right. let that kind of get to, to him. Yeah, you got to do it till the end. Right, yeah. No matter what, if you're going to die, you have to die fighting. Yeah. Type. But even the lizard character, the girl. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, what did you think of her? She was just so, re- that her character was just so reserved. I she don't know. Has, I she had some good weird. moments. Yeah, she did. Like, toward when she was stepping up. Because they tell her to sit behind the bar and she's got like the double barrel shotgun over the fucking chest of fucking right. uh, pa- David Patrick Kelly. Yeah, but his, his, his finger was on the trigger, though. Was it? Yeah, because remember, 
he uh, he was like, oh, my, they didn't cut off my finger. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what, yeah, that was like right before she jumped over the bar. Right, right. It was attack before that. tank. Yeah. Uh, and then that's when she proved herself. Yeah. George Wentz character, he kind of went down pretty quick, but I he's I, I wouldn't assume he's too agile, you know. Right. Um but I'm not trying it's not to make fun of him or anything. <laughs> no, like I that. know, I know. I mean, we're talking about older older folks here, but yeah. I, you know, it's good to see him in that too. I mean, he's been in such a many he's been in a lot of horror movies too. Like yeah, he has. I always remember him in and House. Mm-hmm. You remember House? No, I haven't seen it. You've never seen House. I've never seen House. You always talk about it. What the fuck? And Why? I think you did an episode on it too, and I didn't watch. I have it with you. the collection. Yeah, so you we, do. we're gonna have to do that at some point. In oh, time. you haven't done it yet? I thought you already did it. I think we did one and two, um, but we might have to redo it again because it's how, been so long. How am I gonna do three and four if you haven't watched the first two? So we might as well just redo Get it. Get somebody else on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what. <laughs> You're fired. That's Get the I'm fuck here. out. I'm, I'm just here kidding. for jokes. <laughs> She's fired. She's like the. Okay, bye. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed the film. What do you guys think? Have you seen the movie yet? Are you interested in seeing the movie? If you've listened this far, why the fuck did you listen this far? <laughs> if you haven't like, seen I, it. I always feel like guilty if I don't warn people not to, to listen to me talk. But there's just some people that don't care. And I don't. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Like Josh. He's like, ah. I don't care about surprises. I'm like, well, it, it changes things, though. <laughs> well, I don't know, because I recently listened to Terrible Terror podcast, mm-hmm. and he went over Ver- Verapa Pastor. Ver- 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 Verapa Pastor. It was very good. And they even, you know, I haven't seen it yet, but now I want to see it yeah, because shout I out. listened to him. Shout out, by the way. Thanks for all the love yeah, on that episode, you. by the way. Oh, I can't. He's doing um Tammy and the T-Rex. Oh, is he? Which, obviously, I've seen that one, so I can't wait for him to go into details yet, yeah. on that one. Yeah, so, guys, if you get a chance, check out Terrible Terror Podcast. They're good buddies of ours, so you should definitely check them out. Been huge supporters. He even uh, He's been on the podcast before, too, one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you should check them out. But uh, yeah, guys, I would love to hear what you guys think about this movie. If you're going to take the shot, if not, um, fuck you. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. No. But thank you. I really appreciate you guys sticking around, coming by every week. We've been hitting really big numbers here each week, which is a nice surprise considering you know halloween just ended and you know there's a little bit of a dry spell there for a little while Mm -hmm. but it's been pretty consistent so we thank you guys so much for supporting us and sharing yeah if you if you haven't already and i know i asked this i hate asking anything of you guys so but i have to remind you because i forget shit so (laughs) but if you do have like itunes podcast addict or whatever and they give you an option to review or rate or you know anything subscribe even subscribe to us everywhere because it really does help us out so exactly thank you yeah thank you guys but we'll be back next week i'm not sure what we're gonna do next week we got some new movies uh that we bought yesterday uh with Mm -hmm. a lot of trade-in so we got some good stuff like we got necromantic one and two we got i don't think i want to do those (laughs) (laughs) see that's why we should do them everybody's gonna be like really interested in what you think i think i'm okay Oh, okay. We also got like the One Miss Call trilogy, so I'm looking forward to doing that too. We'll do that for an episode. And maybe some people can suggest that they want us to watch something. Hey, I'm I'm down for that too. Mm-hmm. You know, we got some other movies that are coming out too, so you know, we'll let you know in this in the uh, social media that we have on all of them, Twitter, Facebook, wherever. If you're not on Reddit, you can follow us there. So, but uh yeah, thank you guys so much and we'll catch you guys next week. And as always, long live the boys.